Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of News Plus brought you from Plus Agency.、Uh, News Plus is a program、uh, that's going to summarize what has happened in Sydney real estate, especially the residential part of it, in the past week. If you're interested in this type of content, please make sure you watch and forward to the friend who also interested, and as well as subscribe to our channel. Plus Agency is a boutique agency located in the heart of Chatswood at 418 Victoria Avenue. If you are looking for properties, especially residential, in the Lower North Shore, Upper North Shore, Sydney CBD, or Eastern Suburb, please make sure you pay us a visit to get some of the best deals available on the market. If you're a vendor who have properties in these areas, please make sure you drop in and let us have a look at your property. Maybe we can provide you with a very good services. We have experience with your local agent before. With no further ado, let's get this week's news plus started. First of all, is a About the coming back of mainland Chinese Hong Kong buyers in Australian homes, even though the overall investment trend is lower, but you know in particular areas we actually start to get a lot more attractions. This is featured in South China Morning Post, which will be one of the largest publications、uh, in Hong Kong in English. This particular article was about a sale of our very famous Upper North Shore townhouses, Woodley Eight, which is about 3.5 million US, equivalent to 4.7 million dollar Australian dollars for the townhouse、uh, in one of the most talked about projects、uh, in the Upper North Shore. The buyers are actually from mainland and looking for to occupy this place when it's ready. Even though, despite、uh, the Chinese buyers continue to find Australian property attractive, real estate investment from mainland fell about 11.2 percent to about Australian dollars 6.3 billion dollars in the 12 months to June 2021, according to the latest data from Australian Foreign Investment Review Board. Americans have outranked mainland Chinese as top investors down and up. The Chinese investment. In property, started decline from 2015 after Australia introduced the cooling measure, foreign currency restrictions to stop the cash flow coming out of from China. U.S.、Uh, investment jumped to 58.8 percent to about Australian dollar 20.8 billion dollars in the same period. Overall, foreign inflow into Australian real estate amount is roughly about 92.4 billion dollars. Australian property has had consistent appeal for generations, particularly among purchasers from Hong Kong," said Justin Brown, the chairman of Residential Project CBI Australia. The reasons is ranging from ease of passage, education, business, and now the ownership has spanned generations. Younger buyers and joining families who have already settled in Australia. Another buyer、uh, from Hong Kong recently paid about 62.5 million dollars for property in Sydney, according to J-、uh, Ken Jacobs. Manage his own property agencies in the east. This article, fortunately, not featured me、uh, in it as well. Peter Lee, general manager of Plus Agency, which handled the sale of the townhouse in Woodley Lake together with my colleague、uh, Lian Pan uh, and Jason,、uh, said among Chinese background buyers, Hong Kongers are the most interested in Australia, followed by the Mainlanders and Taiwanese. Majority of the Hong Kong buyers that we have dealt with already have Australian residency, where a majority of the Mainlander Chinese doesn't really have one. Yet,、uh, but in the process of getting them, we are closing deals on FaceTime. We are closing deals on WeChat. We are closing deals on WhatsApp, and that's what's been happening in Sydney at the moment. Next one, Pet Bar founder Jeff David has posted a parenting pad, but it's not pet friendly features. There is a new property that was recently sold in Paddington. It's a five-bedroom, five-bathroom designer showpiece. Residents at 11 to 13 Rossiton Street for 10.75 million, well above the 8.5 million dollar guide. You know, it doesn't have much of a grass at all. It's a, a terrace, terrace. It does have a beautiful pool. You know, despite the buyer actually has some pets, I guess the property itself being so sharp and neat、uh, in design、uh, are actually something that attracted the buyer. The home was purchased for only 7.2 million dollars, almost exactly five years ago. The property record is on 268 square meter block and has 447 square meter internal space with 168 square meters of outdoor terraces. It's a beautiful home and looks like the market is still going. Strong for good properties in good locations. 
Next one, Real Estate Australia, best Sydney suburb for home buyers reviews. Uh, you know, so Sydney buyers have welcomed a surge in newly listed properties for sale, with some suburbs recording more than 180% jump uh, from the same time last year. Home sellers flock onto the market in March after witnessing a year of potential price growth and strong buyer demand. Data from realestate.com.au revealed the number of properties newly listed for sale grows more than 15% month on month and 11% on year as vendor left last year's COVID hesitation behind. As a result, total listings rose more than 10% over the months and 12.5% over the year, offering greater choices to buyers. Some of the areas like Bronte uh, recorded an incredible 186% yearly increase in new listings, while Erskineview 162%, Pennington 133%, and Davichill 125% also saw explosion of properties hit the market. Here is a quick list about changes in new listings on realstate.com.au where the biggest increase is Botany, Erskineview, Paddington, Davishu, and Stanhope Gardens, uh, which are all more than 100%, and decrease will be George Hughes, Monoville, Cranbrook, Austria, and Britain La Seine. I guess these areas shrinking out of big houses after the purchase for a long time. But obviously for these areas like Botany, Erskineview, Paddington, Davishu are definitely a good news to the buyers. Uh, next one. February election 2022, uh, why Sydney's housing market is on ice. Uh, you know, that's a big word, right? The upcoming federal election, fears of an imminent uh, interest rate rises and general mood of economy uncertainty have combined to put Sydney's housing market on ice with buying and selling activity uh, expected to drop. Well, what happened is there's definitely more listings on the market with uh, activities dropping, people means they have more options, which means they need to look like a little bit more options than before they make decision, and that slows down quite a bit. And with the election campaign underway, there are no shortage of property related issues that will be on the voters' mind as they prepare to hand the polls. Uh, despite an early grief from Labour leader or confusion over who will remain in uh, Scott Morrison's cabinet in Canberra, some voters have already made up their mind about who they want to see winning the power coming on the 21st of May, which is very, very close. Located in Western Sydney, St. Mary's, Scott Johnston is a project manager who forgives Mr. Albanese Giffen for not knowing the cash rate, comparing to Ms. Morris's lack of knowledge regarding supreme market stamping cost in February this year. But we'll see what happens before and after the election. It will be very interesting to know that where the Australian property market will go, especially in the premium areas. All right, our champion, uh, Daily Cherry Evans, expand real estate empire with the Whisper Rear. The manly Sea Eagle captain, Daily Cheryl Evans, has dipped further into the property investment market by recently purchasing a two bedroom apartment in Paddle Hill for $580,000. As in Sydney's West, it was bought from uh, Joe Webby's Blue Sox development. This is a lower end you know, affordable area, uh, but looks like people are starting to get into properties in this type of places, uh, especially considering the prices for a lot of area has risen dramatically. Uh, people are looking at a couple of things. First of all, they look at a further away areas where there are infrastructure, there are transportation, but the price hasn't risen as much as some of the other areas. Second of all, they're looking at apartments now. You know, before it was all about big houses uh, on the market, but now with the market start getting more and more expensive, all these apartments start to get a little bit of attractions. Of course, something with a decent view, but the district view, water view, are uh, definitely on the top range of the list. And for, you know, NRL will start to buy into the properties is actually not a news anymore. There are plenty of them uh, actually you know, interested in the property investment. A lot of them has made a lot of money as well. We're fishing them every week. If you keep continuing watching, uh, we'll know who it is, what they buy, and it looks like, and see whether we can find a trend in between. All right, second last article of this week is crisis for tenants. The Sydney rent explode, but worse is yet to come. Uh, this is based on SQM research. So Sydney rental prices has exploded over the past year and more increases are set to come in what could be another city rental crisis, a report from SQM researchers have reviewed. Rents for houses surged nearly 20% over the past year, while rents 
for units increased by around 10% according to data from the property analyst group. The rise in rent followed a grandiose uh, erosion in the supplies of available rentals, with numbers of vacant properties nearly having from about 25,000 last year to about 12,800 at the end of March. So the city-wide vacancy rate, which measures the proportion of all rent stock without a tenant, dropped from 3.4% in earlier 2021 to 1.6%. So there are definitely more people coming. Uh, with the border relaxing, people are flying to Australia. And because the rent has dropped really dramatically during COVID, a lot of people are actually bleeding cash flow during COVID. Now the market go back to normal and the tenants start moving and the prices start to go up. Uh, it looks like it's just on a trend to make the Australian property especially in the CBD areas going back to normal. So whoever that's looking at an investment looks like this is like a really good time to get in because election prices start to cool down and market start to slow down and also the rent on the other hand start to come up and with rent rising the price is rising at the same time as well. Last news, uh, famous foodies Cedula sells for even more. Despite the overall market direction price can still be on the rise. The Harry Cedula layout design Elizabeth Bay Obama recently sold by Foodies Terry Durack and Geo Duplex has been resold for even more money. The couple uh, invested fetched 2.5 million last November off market at what record prices for the late 1960 block. Last week, the eighth floor apartment with the Harbor View was resold for $2.61 million uh, through the local agents. Looks like the prices are still going up, even though uh, it's a very short amount of time compared to November to now, it's only about what uh, less than five months, but the prices are still on the rise in the green areas, especially in the east, where it's considered Pennington, Elizabeth Bay, and all these things. Uh, with just four for floor, the apartment comes with pointing views from the second bedroom, and the kitchen gives a uh, innovative you know, cross flow design. There's a bit of quite a bit of a water uh, in there, even though the property itself is quite old. However, it looks like the market are taking it in at the moment. All right, thank you so much uh, for tuning in to this week's News Plus by Plus Agency. This is Peter Lee. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.